EDR is the term that we use to measure modern radiators and older steam radiators. And it's based on this. We say one square foot of EDR for steam will put out 240 BTUs per hour, British thermal units per hour, but only under these conditions. You have to have 70 degree air on the outside of the radiator and 215 degree steam on the inside of the radiator. Now this is key to understanding steam, this 215 degree steam on the inside of the radiator, because that happens to be steam at about two PSI pressure. As steam pressure goes up, the temperature goes up with it. And what we're seeing here is that by the very definition of EDR, which the old timers, the dead men, used to size radiators, they were depending on it being not more than two pounds of pressure inside the system, because one pound of pressure at the radiator is going to give them that 215 degree steam on the coldest day of the year. So this brings us to a story about uh, how this all came to be, because there was a there was a, a time in America when boilers were exploding at the rate of one every 36 hours. I mean, they were just taken off. And this is because there were very rudimentary relief valves, if any. Uh, we were burning coal. We were burning wood. We didn't have an automatic uh, low water cutoff. We, we can't get a low water cutoff until we have an oil burner. I mean, how would you cut off a coal-fired boiler? You, you really can't. The best you could do is deny it oxygen. So... Uh, they had dampers that, that denied it oxygen based on pressure. But this was a time of, of rapid invention, and it was a time of tremendous danger from steam boilers. So it was bad for business because contractors are trying to sell uh, boilers to, for people to put into buildings. Boiler manufacturers are trying to get people to feel comfortable about this new thing called central heating. But the challenge is that people are afraid that they're going to die if they get it. So an organization forms that comes to be called the Carbon Club. And this was a group of, of the boiler manufacturers, pretty much all the boiler manufacturers in the industry, that banded together in 1898 and 1899. And I have these old magazines that, that were printed back then that have the minutes of these meetings as they took place. And it was a fascinating thing because the Carbon Club was pretty much brought together for the purpose of making systems safer, sure. But it was also, it was also a group of companies that decided that they were going to fix prices because they wanted to make sure that everybody made a good profit in these days of, of central heating when it was brand new. So they were in defiance of the Sherman Antitrust Act at the time, which was law and had been law for almost 10 years. But the government was going after uh, you know people like Rockefeller. They weren't really looking at the boiler people. So the boiler people were just flouting the law and doing what they wanted. So they, uh, they began to get concerned about the safety issue in a, in a big way in 1899. And they held a meeting in Manhattan at the Murray Hill Hotel, which was on Park Avenue. It's no longer there. But on December 18th and December 19th, they had this meeting and they decided in that meeting that from now on, all steam boilers should be run at 2 PSI. All hot water boilers should be run at 180 degrees. That's why we do it, because they decided at that meeting that the difference between steam equivalent direct radiation and hot water direct radiation should be a factor of 0.6, which is why steam boilers put out 240 BTUs per hour and hot water boilers with an average water temperature of 170 degrees Fahrenheit only put out 150 BTUs. They also decided at this meeting over two days that there should be something called a pickup factor, which accounts in a steam system for the pipes that have to be heated up before we can heat the radiators. The same thing went for hot water. So these people in two days pretty much changed the face of, of heating as we know it. And that was done on December 18th, December 19th, and 1899. So when we enter the 20th century, we're entering at a time when the industry declares that there is not a building built from this day forward that can't be heated with two pounds of pressure or less. And this is why buildings such as the Empire State Building runs on two pounds of pressure. So that makes you kind of wonder why the troubleshooting job that you're doing in Mrs. McGillicuddy's three-bedroom house is running at eight pounds of pressure, doesn't it? The way the Carbon Club did this in 1899 was they established a chart that said if you've got a certain load of steam moving through a certain size of pipe, you ought to uh, do it this way. And if you do it this way, the pressure drop of the steam as it moves from the boiler to the radiation will be about one ounce of pressure loss for every 100 feet of travel. So if we start out with 200... I'm sorry, two pounds of pressure at the boiler, 1,600 feet down the line, or 160 stories straight up in the air on the coldest day of the year, we will still have one pound of pressure left over 
and that satisfies EDR. So that's the story behind that, and that's the reason why if you see a pressure troll, you better crank the pressure down because that may be why the building's not heating. Your pressure is just too high. Crank the pressure up too high, your air vents will stop working. If the air can't get out, the steam can't get up.